Hey, welcome everyone to our online service. Um, it's really cool to be able to have this time with you together. And um, we have a really um, cool service um, for you this morning. And uh, we will be um, uh, starting a new series this week um, in the lead up to Easter um, over the next four weeks. Um, and uh, Craig will be talking to you about the Garden of Get Jesus in the Garden of Gethsemane. And, um, just really hope that that will be just a, a real encouragement to you as you look at um, the testimony of, of Jesus' own life, his own experience and suffering, and um, that he's opened, he's given us that account in the Bible to have that insight into his humanity, the God man, and suffering. Um, so, um, uh, just uh, as you are. Um, aware that um, changes around gatherings is, is um, coming up and um, so the elders will be meeting tomorrow night Monday night um, and talking about uh, how the church or when the church will have our first um, gathering with everyone together so we um, want it to be something that's just a really cool big welcome home to everyone um, as we've all been kind of separated in, in various ways um, for the last while and that this is just this really cool chance celebration of of our family coming back home um, and we want it to be just that awesome welcome so if you could just pray for them as they um, consider how to do this when to do this um, tomorrow night and um, they will be letting you know what the decision is um, as soon as they're able to um, so let's just pray together as we um, continue in, in the service. Heavenly Father, we are just so thankful for the fact that we can still meet together like this, that though we are separated um, in so many ways, that um, we have this way of, of unity together. And just having um, a service where we meet together and have this focus of our, our time and our attention um, ready to um, just sit and to hear from you, to learn from you, to have the space set aside for um, for that specifically. So Lord, I pray your real blessing over this time, um, over each person, Lord, that you would um, be able to speak into each heart as we need. Lord, you know what each heart needs. You know how we need to hear from you. So I pray that your spirit would be free to act, free to speak, and that we will receive with open hearts and um, that we, we will be equipped for what we need for today, for the week ahead, for the months ahead. And we thank you, God, that you are so ready to do that. And we um, are just so thankful for your love and care of us. And we just pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you. Hey kia ora, um, amazing Agora family, um, how are you doing? Hey, so as you know, we're uh, welcoming uh, different elders uh, onto eldership, so uh, you would have seen um, us uh, pray for and uh, talk a bit about eldership with Rex and Shelley uh, last uh, week, and so um, this time it's kind of, because Grant's been an elder for a whole bunch of years, what, four years now? About that. Well, count. Yeah, yeah. Something like that. Yeah. Um, and so we're welcoming Christine on, but same as with Shelley, um, she actually came on eldership. As you know, we made sure we told the church and made it all clear um, towards uh, last year before the lockdown. And so we're finally, um, after all the craziness of COVID and everything else, um, kind of officially welcoming and commissioning and praying for Christine and all that kind of cool stuff. Hey, so I talked about um, one of the key parts of eldership when I was talking about uh, Shelley coming on, is that shepherding. Um, the other big part of eldership is leadership, right, which Shelley referred to. So um, as you know, the elders, are, a big part of their role is uh, setting the vision and the direction uh, for the whole church. Um, often there's some really sticky issues that elders need to work through. So they've got to be people with great wisdom, uh, people who handle the Word of God really well, people who have real good insight uh, into the mind of God. Um, and so that's one of the things that as an eldership, we're just so excited with Christine. Uh, coming on because we see her as someone who has that real leadership, that real wisdom um, and eldership. So, yeah, just super excited. And again, so Christine and Shelley and Al, who we'll talk about next Sunday, um, they all came on to eldership um, yeah, towards the end of last year, but we're kind of finally officially um, welcoming them and commissioning them and all that cool stuff. So was there anything you want to say, Christine, or you're all good? Uh, 
Yeah, I guess for me it was just a bit of a journey, I suppose, to get yeah. here. Um, it wasn't something that I necessarily um, thought yeah. about, I guess, um, early on. Um, but, yeah, I guess, and I had those kind of Moses moments, I think, mm. where, um, you know, kind of Moses said, well, you know, what can I, yeah. what can I do? I'm not, I'm not suitable. Yeah. Um, and so the more I thought about that, the more I kind of journeyed through the process. Um, I kind of thought, actually, it's more about not who I am, but who he is. Yeah. Um, cool. And what he can do through you, I guess, mm. is kind of um, where I got to, I guess. Um, and so, you know, God says to Moses, um, when Moses says, well, I can't, um, I'm not yeah. capable, I can't do it. And he's like, he just says, I am. Mm. Um, and so for me, that was kind of the, the point where I thought, actually, yeah, God can use us as long as we're willing to serve. Mm -hmm. Actually, He can um, use us and take, um, yeah, take what we have to, yeah. to give. So, yeah, yeah so for me cool. it was, um, yeah, it was quite a cool journey, and that's, mm -hmm. you know, kind of had peace about it mm -hmm. at the end, really. So, yeah, and the decision. So, yeah, so yeah. Yeah, I'm excited and, um, yeah, really keen to, to um, serve and be used by God. Yeah. Oh, super cool, eh? Super cool! You want to pray? Yeah, let's pray. Up, bro? Cool. Hey, Father God, we just, um, again, we, we come to you with excitement and joy that Christine's um, humbly just, you know, taken that slow journey and path to um, listen to you and, and hear from you and take your guidance and joining um, the, the team of elders that, you know, as we journey um, the new seasons that are coming and the, the journey that you've got us on, we just so thankful you put her on our team. Um, and given us um, another person that's just bringing a different perspective to the situations that we come across and help us to navigate them, Lord, um, as we listen and, and hear from you um, for glory, Lord. So, Father, we just um, yeah, we thank you for both Grant and Christine and the work they have been doing and the work that they will do in the future, Lord. And we just ask that you just give them strength and wisdom. Um, and guidance as they journey this together individually but also as a couple and that's something quite unique to have um, is that, that unique journey that they take together and the perspective of the couple and um, the, the eldership team so Father we're just here so thankful for that and ask for your guidance and direction and um, yeah, just your blessings upon their lives as they journey this we pray in your name, Amen Amen Hello Family Church, today I am going to read from uh, Luke 22, 39, 46. Then, accompanied by the disciples, Jesus left the upstairs room and went as usual to the Mount of Olives. There he told them, pray that you will not give into temptation. He walked away about a stone's throw and knelt down and prayed, Father, if you are willing, please take this cup of, ma of suffering away from me. Yet I want you will to be done, not mine. Then an angel from heaven appeared and strengthened him. He prayed more fervently and he was in such agony of his spirit that his sweat fell to the ground like great drops of blood. And last he stood up again and returned to the disciples only to find them asleep, exhausted from grief. Why are you sleeping? He asked them. Get up and pray so that you will not give into temptation. Now I'm going to read in Spanish. El Lucas 22, 39 y 46. Jesús oró en el monte de los olivos. Jesús salió de la ciudad y como de costumbre se dirigió al monte de los olivos y sus discípulos lo siguieron. Cuando llegaron al lugar les dijo, oren para que no caigan en tentación. Entonces se separó de ellos a una buena distancia, se arrodilló y empezó a orar. Padre, si quieres, 
no me hagas beber este trago amargo, pero no se cumpla mi voluntad, sino la tuya. Entonces se le apareció un ángel del cielo para fortalecerlo, pero como estaba angustiado, se puso a orar con más fervor, y su sudor era como gotas de sangre que caían a tierra. Cuando terminó de orar y volvió a los discípulos, a, los encontró dormidos, agotados por la tristeza. ¿Por qué están durmiendo? Les exhortó. Levántense y oren para que no caigan en tentación. Hey, kia ora. Awesome church. How are you doing? Hey, um, I'm here to preach. And I'm also here to do the, the little elder comments. So as you guys know, each Sunday, uh, whether we're in church or online, we have one of the elders um, share a thought uh, and pray for all of us. And so that's me uh, today. So this morning, I just wanted to talk about how awesome our generosity, our <laughs> generosity has been as a church lately. So hopefully last week you heard that cool story that Joel shared about um, Ross and Annette uh, taking uh, some of the meals that the ladies had prepared. Uh, and blessing a family and I just wanted to let you know we've done that um, for church people so much over the last little while oh, so as I've said some people donated a bunch of meat and it's been amazing uh, how many times Josephine and I've done it a few times has been able to take um, some sausages or some mints um, or a bunch of the meals uh, to folks in our church who are just really struggling. Um, we've taken tons to people that are isolating for COVID and all that, but we've also been able to take heaps of these meals to people that are, yeah, life's just real hard at the moment. Um, there's a bunch of people in our church that are just really, really struggling to make ends meet. Um, a lady said to me, I think it was last week, she said, she's at the point, no, two weeks ago, at the point now where each week I had to have to decide, am I gonna drive my car or am I gonna get groceries? And she's like, obviously I'm not gonna drive my car because I need to eat. So how's she getting around? Um, it's, we've got people in the church that are that tight. Um, people going to food banks to get food and, and so on. And you wouldn't know. They turn up to church and they're happy and you know they're not <laughs> moaning and groaning, but they're really struggling. And so it's just been awesome to be able to bless them um, on behalf of our church uh, and, and on behalf of God uh, with a meal or two or with some meat and stuff. So it's really cool. Hey, the other thing I want to say is, um, our giving month was, was March, or is March, I guess it's still kind of going, but we've kind of um, focused on those other weeks because we're moving into a new series of preaching today. And I just want to say, man, the generosity has been really awesome. Um, church finances were starting to look a little bit tight, and one of the, the, the I don't know, struggles, whatever, that we have as a church is because we have the cafe. Um, if the cafe is really struggling, the church might have to help a bit, and, and if vice versa, if the church was struggling, the cafe could help, but that's not happening. Um, but the cafe struggling and the church finances were getting tight. And I was like, no, but um, yeah, people's generosity has just been wild. So um, heaps of, I haven't um, seen the, the final kind of figures and stuff. I don't see who gives um, what or anything, but I'll see, you know, the final amount that's kind of come in. And, but I'm really looking forward to seeing that and seeing, you know, did some people start giving for the first time, which is super exciting. Uh, but I know there's been some really um, cool gifts come in there. I know um, I'm talking to some of the folks have been quite sacrificial on their part. So uh, just real exciting to see uh, that blessing coming into the church. Eh? And, and then, like we've been saying, uh, Joel and I were saying, and I've been saying, then we can then bless the community, right? And there's different events we want to come up. And I've been talking to John John about doing a holiday program, uh, maybe at the end of term two, and, and just all these things we want to do this year to reach out. So it's been cool. So shot. Church for being generous, whether you're making meals or you've been praying for people or um, financially giving. Um, it's been really cool to be able to bless uh, different people in different ways, right? Um, it is, yeah, that's cool. That's cool. I was going to say, it's like I cheat because I didn't do any of the cooking of the meals, but then I'm the guy taking meals to people and they're like, oh my gosh, Craig, the and I like get the, the joys and I'm like, thank you, no problem. No, I don't. I, I email the people that did the cooking and I'll text the people to say, thank you, you're amazing. So, anyway, so shot church. Hey, so sermon time. Hey, so obviously uh, we're leading up to Easter. Um, Easter's a couple of weeks away, and so we wanted to do a bit of a series uh, just kind of leading into um, the Easter, well, excuse me, celebration, well, the, the sadness of Friday and the celebration of Sunday, right? And so uh, we're just doing a couple of me. I'm going to preach today, and then um, Sarah's going to preach uh, next week um, uh, as we lead into Easter. So the thing that I want to look at, Today is a little bit different, so I, I need you to really focus because I'm going to say some stuff in the middle of the sermon that if you don't hear me, you're going to be like, 
blasphemy and try and burn the church down or slash my tires or well I was on a scooter this morning so if you slash them I don't know I'll get in trouble with the scooter people um and then at the end there's this real cool bit that Wendy and I were texting heaps about um this week which was real fun and I've been digging into commentaries and stuff just some thought stuff so there's a bit in the middle you need to listen to and then a bit at the end that's like hmm real interesting so um that's a little bit about uh where we're going and just you know so we're planning to have some do some stations uh, around the church for reflection and prayer on Friday night. Uh, so we'll give you more information about the exact when and, and maybe, you know, maybe outside and then you go upstairs, kind of a guided time of reflection and prayer and different stations and, and then the cafe. So we'll do that on Friday night. And then on Sunday, um, we're just planning a, a real exciting service for here. And um, we're, we're wondering if some of the house churches may um, want to carry on because they're loving community. We just need, need to see. We're hoping, um, as you've seen, um, the government has changed all the... <laughs> COVID restrictions and so on. So by Easter, easily, we can all be back together again. So we're hoping that we can do that. We can all be together um, for Easter, which is really exciting. So have just an awesome time of celebration of finally being back together. Everyone, not everyone's in house churches and um, stuff. So yeah, looking forward to um, to that uh, Easter. Um, if you like the sadness of Friday, but the celebration of Sunday. So um, should be really cool. Hey, so what I want to look at is uh, Jesus' prayer in the Garden of Gethsemane, right? So it's right towards the end of his life, obviously right before he's... Uh, crucified. And it's real interesting when you look through um, that chapter in Matthew uh, and you just see, I think, quite a cool snapshot of the last two days of Jesus' life. And you see very clearly in it that Jesus' life is not, well, I'm God and I walk on water and raise people from the dead and I just, I'm, everything's amazing and wonderful. You see in those verses that, well, in, the, in that chapter, you can just kind of go through it. I'm going to kind of speed us through it in a minute. But you see, the, the highs and lows, most of them are lows, just the struggles that Jesus had. But he's fully God, but he's fully human, so he's going to have struggles and pain and and all this. So, like, I just summarised it here real quick. So, verse 3, um, which is two days before his crucifixion, the priest planned to kill him, right? It's like, well, that's pretty horrible. Um, and then verse 6, a few verses down, you have the beautiful story of Mary uh, anointing Jesus' feet with that beautiful oil. And when I was reading about it, um, some people reckon the oil was... It's a long story, but that the oil was rated on how um, well it, it penetrated um, for its fra fragrance and how long it would last, and it was rated on that. And so a lot of people, this is only a couple of days before Jesus is going to be crucified, and a lot of people believe that even during the whipping and during the actual, while he was cr being crucified, he would still have the smell, the fragrance of that beautiful blessing of Mary with him, just that reminder. And I was like, oh, that's pretty powerful. So Mary, so then um, verse 14, Judas agrees to betray Jesus, and he's like one of his inner kind of friends. Um, verse 17, the last supper Jesus has with the disciples when he washes their super nasty feet. So remember back then, there's no roads. You're walking an animal, and it's nasty. So washing people's feet was always the lowest servant's job because it's just like, ew. Um, and then verse 31, Jesus predicts that Peter will deny Jesus. And Peter's in the inner three, right? His real close friends, and, and he's saying, you're going to deny me. So when, when you look back, you just see a kind of a cool snapshot of Jesus' life of these. Um, you know, there's not a lot of highs in there, right? The lows, the struggles, the, the burdens that Jesus has to carry because he's being fully human. He's, he's engaging in what it means to be us, right? He doesn't cheat and just... Um, float around and have everything amazing. Um, and, and, and that leads us, after Peter's denial, it leads us to the prayer in the Garden of Gethsemane, which Victoria read for us, which was really awesome. Right, we're going to read it again um, in a minute. So I just love how Matthew, Mark, Luke and John, how, how the gospel writers so clearly portray the fullness of the life of Jesus, right? The fullness of the life of Jesus, the good, um, the bad, the struggles and, and all this, right? Um, yeah, I I put this little um, message up. Again, all the stuff will be here. Jesus is fully God and fully human, and therefore his life has joy and struggle, pain and pleasure. And I put even though, quotes, even though Jesus is God, he understands the depths of our life journey. He gets our struggles, right? And when we call to him in grief or frustration, he totally understands. When we call to him in joy and happiness, he totally understands. When we call to him in desperation and anger, he totally understands. He, he gets it, and, and therefore he's able to strengthen us perfectly. There's no, oh, I'm not sure what emotion you've got. How do I? See? He knows because he was there. He, he endured um, the same 
kind, not the exact same temptations, right, or the same exact struggle that you have, but the same kinds of temptations, right? Um, yeah, I just think that's it's important to remind ourselves of that, that when we call out to, to, to God, he gets it. <laughs> he really gets it because Jesus lived as us. Um, I, as you know, I have a couple of mentors in my life, so I always try and keep at least two. So a spiritual mentor who I talk to them about me and Jesus and my marriage and all that good stuff. And then I have a professional mentor, a business mentor. And with them, we talk about the, and I know it sounds weird, the business side of my life, the church side, like running a cafe and, you know, running and quotes a church and all that and staffing and employment and blah, blah, blah. blah. Um, and whenever I look for a, a mentor, I always look for the most amazing person I can find, right? The person who is the most experienced, who's way, you know, miles ahead of me. And usually it's mildly terrifying, but I just boldly then go and ask this amazing person, oh, would you be happy to be my mentor, right? Um, and one of the things I love in doing that is because the person is so much further ahead than I am in whatever, you know, spiritual or um, the, the business side, when I go to them with questions, they're never like, whoa. I have never thought about that, Craig. Oh my. They're always like, wow, you know, that's a great question. And they usually ask questions back and do all that tricky stuff rather than just telling me the answer. Right? Um, but they're way ahead of me. They, they get it. They've, they've been there. They've been through the struggle. They understand. They're, they're wise. They therefore can dig in with good questions. That I'm like, whoa, it's a good question. Whoa. You know, all that stuff. So the reason I'm saying that is that Jesus is way better than my mentors. <laughs> my mentors are awesome. And Jesus is infinite infinitely better um, than my mentors because it's not just that he's been there but he's been there but he's also God um, my mentors can't divinely inspire me my mentors can't divinely encourage me uh, my mentors can't divinely strengthen me they're awesome but they can't do that but Jesus can so not only does he get it and he's like the best mentor ever but because he's also God and he's the Trinity and the Holy Spirit empowers us and, you know, all that. Because he's God, he doesn't just listen and ask good questions. He listens and then he can literally give us strength. He can literally give us insight. He can literally give us wisdom. Um, because he's human and, and God. I, I just love that, right? I love that. Um, I don't know. He, he gets us, right? He gets us. There's a little quote here from um, William Barclay that I, I just really love. So let me read this to you. Um, so it's, he's talking about the Garden of Gethsemane, right? The prayer that Jesus prays, which Victoria read. Jesus had to fight this battle all alone. That also is true of everyone. There are certain things I must face with uh, and certain decisions I must make in the awful loneliness of my own soul. There are times when other helpers fail and comforts flee. <laughs> But in that loneliness, there is the presence of the one who, in Gethsemane, experienced it and came through it. I love that. Eh? He, he really gets how our struggles. Um, he gets the, the, the hardness of our, of our lives. Um, I know you know, but just real quickly, it's like if you're going through a hard time with family, man, Jesus gets hard times with family. His dad died most probably when he's young. There's a point in his life where his mother and his brothers and sisters come and try and take him by force because they literally say he's crazy, he's nuts. It's like he, he gets what family dynamics and dysfunction and struggle in a family is. Um, his disciples, his friends desert him, as we're going to read. Um, one of his friends, who's he's been with for three years, Judas, literally stabs him in the back, right? You know, um, Peter denies him in front of him. You remember, there's that that verse where. In the middle of Peter denying him, Jesus looks him in the eye in the courtyard and he knows, right? Jesus gets, he gets us. So, so, so we need to call out to him is where I'm going. It's pretty obvious. Okay. Hey, um, I just got a couple of, that was a long introduction, right? But I don't know. Um, I got a couple of um, other points I want to make. So here's the first one. Um, why did Jesus need the disciples in this? To me, this is a real interesting question. And this is part of what Wendy and I were texting about. Why did Jesus need... The disciples um, and I want to read these verses again and I want you to really listen for how many times um, Jesus actually asked the disciples to be with him that, that's what he's saying so I'm going to read um, where are we uh, we're in Matthew 26 36 to um, 46 uh, I'm reading from the New Living Translation here yeah? uh, then Jesus went with them to the olive grove called Gethsemane and he said sit here while I go over there to pray and he took, so he took his inner three, his three best friends, uh, Peter and Zebedee's two sons, James and John, and he became anguished and distressed. 
And he told them, because he's with them, my soul is crushed with grief to the point of death. Stay here and keep watch with me. Now, he's not worried about the crucifixion, the, the physical side of it, although that's heinous. He's worried about being the sin of the world, right? That, that's what um, he's worried about, being cut off from the Father and so on. Um, verse 39, he went on a little farther and bowed with his face to the ground, praying, my Father, if it's possible, let this cup of suffering be taken away from me, yet I want your will to be done, not mine. Then he returned to the disciples and found them asleep. What? Didn't they hear the whole, my soul is crushed to grief? It's like, who are these mates? And he said to Peter, oh, couldn't you watch with me even one hour? Keep watch and pray so that you'll not give in to temptation. For the spirit is willing, but the body is weak. Oh, then Jesus left them a second time and prayed, my father, if this cup cannot be taken away unless I drink it, your will be done. When he turned to them, returned to them again, why did he return to them again? That's kind of our question. Why did he need these disciples? He found them sleeping for they couldn't keep their eyes open. So he went to pray a third time saying the same thing. And he wakes the disciples and he's betrayed. Um, so here's my question. Now, this is the bit where I need you to hear me. Remember I said in the middle of the sermon, there's a, you need to be careful. <laughs> well, I need to be careful. I'm going to get myself in huge uh, theological trouble, right? So this this question here, why did Jesus need the disciples? And here's my my bigger question, were Jesus and God not enough? <laughs> Does it make sense? Was God not enough for Jesus at this time? Um, was the struggle and the, the pain of the garden and the prayer and realizing what, I'm not real, not like his first you know, understanding, but here we go <laughs> to the cross and becoming sin of the world. Was God not enough of a support, not enough of an encouragement, not enough of a strength and a for him? Was God insufficient? That's kind of what I'm asking right now i'm going to say no of course not god is sufficient he's who we need but he designed us for community right so um i, I chucked it on the, the screen here genesis 2 8 this is kind of a crazy verse in the middle of all the beauty of the garden and everything you have this crazy verse then the lord god said it's not good what what's not good ah, he's been saying this is good that's good the sun's good the plants are good the fish are good everything's good the man's good and then he's like whoa there's something that's not good and you're like what for the man to be alone. I'll make a helper for him. I love that. I'll just make a helper for him. Just casually create humans. What? Um, who's just right for him. I, I just love this verse. What we're seeing here is Adam at this time, everything is perfect. Adam is perfect, right? Probably not as amazingly physiqued as me. Whoa, nah. Adam would have been perfect in every way, right? Um, he walks face to face and talks with God daily, regularly, right? What? Um, he's in the most beautiful creation ever. He has this cool job with the greatest boss, God. <laughs> a cool job of naming animals and hanging out. You know, it's like everything's perfect, but it's not good for him to be alone. And we see there this whole, and you see it right through the, the Bible, right? And in our own lives, we are created for community. We need people, right? Um, we need people. It's like Adam has everything he could need, but yet it's not enough. He has God, but that's not enough. Now, I'm not saying God is insufficient. I want to be kept clear on that but i'm saying the way god designed us he designed us for community we cannot do life alone we cannot do life just me and god or does it make sense eh? i think that's kind of important and so that's kind of what i see happening here with with jesus yeah god's sufficient but as he's fully human he's about to go through this he literally says my soul is crushed with grief because i'm about to become the son of the world he's just like oh. and he's like i need my three guys I need my best friends, guys. I, and it, my shady, I don't know, my paraphrase of this this passage that I read and that Victoria read is Jesus saying, guys, I need you. I just need your comfort. I need your closeness, your physical presence. I, I need to see you guys praying for me because I am crushed. Um, I need you guys. And they fall asleep. <laughs> Did you see how many times? Three times. He goes to them and he asks them to, to be with him. Right? He looks to them for this friendship. Um, I was thinking about this this week, and I just kept, and I know I've talked about this before, but I keep thinking, man, what a blessing it is to be a human, right? What a blessing it is that God has created me, God has created you with needs and we're all messed up and blah, blah, blah. But he's created you to speak love and, and, and life into people's lives. Now, this is important, this bit, because I know some of you will go, oh, but oh, it's just me, I'm useless, I couldn't encourage anyone. And I'm like, <laughs> I was going to go, shut up. But you shouldn't say that in sermon. 
Um, here's the thing. Was Jesus asking the disciples to give him counsel? No. Was Jesus asking the disciples to give him deep wisdom and insight? They didn't even understand what's going on. Man. They have no idea about the cross and him becoming sin. They just, that's not even in there. So no, of course not. What does he want? He just wants their companionship. He just wants to know they're praying with him. That's literally what he wants, right? Um, so often, I think we don't speak words of encouragement and and truth and, and support and blah, 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 or don't be there for someone because we're thinking, oh, I'm not wise enough. What if they ask me a question and like, I need to be insightful and blah. And the person's like, I don't want to hear that. I just want you. I just want companionship. I want friendship. I want to know you're praying for me. I want to know you're there. But I love that. Eh? Jesus doesn't look at them for counsel and wisdom and insight. He just looks to them for them. Um, he, he just loves them as they are and, and wants to be with them, right? Um, yeah, pretty pretty huge. Hey, so here's the second question. I hope you hear me right. I'm not saying God's insufficient, but he's created us for community. Hey, here's the, the second little thought. Um, why did Jesus need an angel? And this is the like, what? Why? Remember I said there'd be a, a heavy one in the middle or a confusing one you need to listen. And then at the end there's a what? So this is a bit of a what? And I hope I don't get in trouble. Um, with the amazing Wendy, but we were texting on this one quite a bit. What's with the angel? Why does an angel appear? So we see twice in the life of Christ an angel come to, it's always an angel comes to strengthen him, to encourage him, to lift him up. So the first is at the end of the time of testing, the 40 days, when he doesn't eat for 40 days. So he would be emaciated, nearly dead, right? And angels come to strengthen him. And then the other time is here. Um, the angels come, and I'll, I'll chuck the verse on so you can see it real clearly. It's from the Luke passage that Victoria read. Uh, then an angel from heaven appeared and strengthened him, right? So my question, first of all, was um, why did Jesus need the disciples? And I think we've unpacked that. And here's the second question. Why does Jesus need the angel with, with the angel kind of coming? So I have a couple of ideas, right? Two little ideas. Um, and the first one is maybe the disciples were plan A, <laughs> but they failed. So plan B was the angel, right? And again, God's outside time, so we knew the disciples would fail, so really plan B is actually plan A, if you know what I mean. Um, but I wonder if the real plan was the disciples to be the encouragement and the support and the strength that Jesus needed, the comfort. But because they don't, God's like, really, guys? You know? um, and he sends an angel because, again, Jesus needed that f physical comfort to see someone, and I know an angel's not a human, um, someone be with him, right? Um, that, that presence. Remember, we're so created for community and and again, I say this carefully, there's times in your life where, or my life, right, where I'm, I'm praying and I know God's got me, but I just need a human to be with me, to encourage me. I need to hear from a human and have their prayers and their comfort. Does that make sense, eh? Um, so I wonder if that's one reason why the angel um, came for that physical support, that physical encouragement. So you could see the speak and the hug and the, I don't know, the angel's hug, I don't know. Um, it's just a silly story. So... Um, when my daughters were growing up, when they were real little, um, we used to look after a couple of my nephews all the time because their mum uh, worked and we'd pick them up from school and do all this crazy stuff. And it was real crazy. One of them falls asleep in the car like that, like almost instantly. It's the craziest thing ever. You literally pick them up from school or back in the day from daycare, get in the car. And <laughs> if you drove for like 30 seconds and turned around and went, hey, I won't say his name, he'd be asleep. But just instant sleep. It was just crazy, right? So we were living way out in the country and... As maybe you know, um, often when you've got little kids in the car, as you're driving, you're like, ooh, a cow, you know, and ooh, a horse, and ooh, a tractor, and all this crazy stuff. But this guy would be asleep, literally, every time. I don't think he ever was awake when we drove. And all the other kids, there'd be three other kids in the car, like, wow, oh, you know, look at the tractor, oh, look at the farmer, look at the whatever. Um, he's asleep. He just sleeps through the whole thing. Then you get home, and, um, and, and he'd have no idea what happened, right? Because he's just completely out to it. I don't know if you've got kids like that or you've seen kids like that. It's kind of kind of hilarious. It's not good. Anyway, I was going to say, it's not good when it, it's right before their sleep time because then you take them in and now they're awake and they're meant to be sleeping. It's like, oh. Anyway, it's not possible. Hey, so here's another idea. So idea one is maybe just that physical comfort with the angel. Here's another idea that, that I thought was kind of wild. So again, Wendy, all credit to Wendy. Um is, is it maybe that when Jesus says to them, he says to them a couple of times, watch and pray. Now, there's a clear um, meaning in the text that part of what he's saying is watch that you don't fall into temptation. Now, 
and sleep, and but also don't fall into the temptation of deserting me, which they're going to do, and he, he knows they're going to do it. But like Wendy and I were like, man, was he also saying, watch, because a miracle is going to happen right in front of you. A literal angel, it's coming. And if you guys stay awake and watch, you're going to see God do something incredible, and you're going to be like, oh, you know, this is going to be absolutely amazing. But they keep um, sleeping, <laughs> and they miss an angel coming and comforting God. I mean, that's who's in the garden with them, God, right? Um, so here's the, the end of my little talk, but this last little slide. I wonder if we miss seeing God do a miracle because we sleep, in quotes, right? Through situations when God has called us to be awake and pray or engage. <laughs> um, I was thinking about it a lot this week, and, and I thought, as a pastor, people are always asking me to pray for them, right? Which is like, really? No, which is like, awesome, of course, you know? Um, one of the things I often do is I set timers. And so there's often there'll be someone really struggling and I'll set a timer for every hour. So through the day, the whole day, I'll, every hour my timer goes off and I stop and pray for that person and, and whatever. Um, it's just part of being a Christian, right? We're always praying for people and, and, and caring for them. But I, I forget. I'm sure you forget too, right? And sometimes I'll forget and it'll be a few days later and I'll be like, oh my gosh, someone asked me to pray and I totally spaced it. Now, reflecting on this missing out seeing an angel, I was I was thinking about it, and that's what this is saying. I wonder how many times I miss seeing something incredible because I forgot to pray for that person. I forgot to encourage that person. I forgot to be there for that person. I, I slept through something God was calling me to do, to speak into the life of someone, to just pray for someone. And, and maybe God still did the miracle, did the amazing blessing for that person, but I miss out on it because I was now not a part of it because... I wasn't being intentional. I wasn't setting my alarms and, and, and all this kind of stuff. I wasn't writing it down in my calendar to remember to pray for them. I just wonder how many times we miss God doing something incredible because we sleep, eh? Hmm. All right. Hey, that's the end of this little talk. Special shout out to the coolest house church that will be watching us upstairs with me awkwardly sitting there with you all. Um, yeah, have a cool rest of your day wherever, whenever you're watching this. Eh? Cool. Kakitano. Thanks so much for joining us this morning. I hope you've had an awesome service with us and uh, I'm just going to pray as we close. Yeah, Jesus, um, thank you so much that you came to this earth, that you uh, lived a perfect life and that you died on the cross for us and this Easter and um, help us remember that and have a deeper appreciation for the fact that you came and died and that you rose again as we um, head to Easter this week. And I just pray that you give everyone an amazing week and bless them. And uh, yeah, um, thank you, Jesus, so much. We praise you, worship you. Amen. Great. Have a fantastic week and God bless. Mm -hmm.